on the list. A pitch from 1,800 miles away. A special little leaguer gets the surprise of a lifetime. Plus, they're America's heroes and fathers. Tell your kids you love them. Inside a family of soldier dads. And don't look down, hang it out, 315 feet in the air. Hey everybody and welcome to the Friday edition of The List. I'm Teresa Strasser. And I'm Matt Gallant. We search the world looking for the stories everyone is talking about. And here are the top five. I'm Jan Jeffcoat at number one, Star Spangled Redemption. Sebastian De La Cruz sang some haters in his submission at last night's NBA Finals game. The 11-year-old mariachi singer received a barrage of hateful tweets after his first performance, so the San Antonio Spurs invited him back. Yes, another chance to show San Antonio what I have to give them. And he did not disappoint. Sebastian received a standing O and a congrats from both coaches. Sebastian hit more high notes than my Spurs, unfortunately, who were scorched by the Miami Heat to even the series at two games apiece. At number two, fast food, as in food that makes you want to go on a fast. A picture of a Wendy's employee who apparently really loves his Frosties has gone viral. Well, viral or bacterial, the worker is guzzling the delicious frozen treat straight out of the machine, making the Taco Bell taco liquor seem downright aristocratic. And if this guy isn't problem enough for Wendy's, now the hamburger chain has ordered one of its restaurants in Canada to stop selling its giant nine patty T-Rex burger. It has 3,000 calories and 200 grams of fat. Guess Canada's socialized medicine just didn't have the resources to keep up with all the heart attacks. At number three, the recession and the inflation. The high price of tires is driving Americans to the rental store. Rent-to-own tire shops are popping up all over the place, offering a monthly payment plan for those who can't afford to get jacked for hundreds of dollars at once. Sorry to deflate your hopes, but in some cases, customers end up spending twice as much going the rent-to-own route. And then, of course, you have to buy the air to inflate them. At number four, throwing a pitch from 1,800 miles away. 13-year-old baseball fan Nick Legrand threw out the first pitch at a Major League Baseball game yesterday from across the City. country. Baseball is like a passion to me, and uh, I just really love it. Birthday boy Nick's life-threatening blood disease keeps him from going to games. Well, thanks to Google Fiverr and Oakland A's pitcher Ryan Cook, that doesn't matter. When he threw the first pitch at a Kansas City Google field, a robotic arm at the A's-Yankees game in California mimicked his throw. I thank everybody who was a part of it. At number five, the Man of Steel has daddy issues, and that is just the tip of the iceberg. The new Superman movie may be flying to the top of the box office, but a group of psychiatrists say the Man of Steel has feet of clay. Excuse me. A group of real psychiatrists did a real analysis of the fictional character. On the upside, Superman is resilient and does not suffer from PTSD. On the downside, he does have identity issues as a result of having been adopted. The shrinks say he's pretty close to self-actualization, so Superman, how does being analyzed make you feel? It's genuinely not just an American thing. Feels like you are caught up and clued in on the top of the list. A blonde bombshell and a billionaire bonehead. Pop culture hotter than the scalp under Donald Trump's, what I think is hair, on the hot list. You're fired. Like he doesn't have his fingers in enough pies, now Donald Trump is a TV critic. Between running the empire he inherited and primping his comb over, the Donald caught an episode of Modern Family and here was the resulting tweet. Just tried watching Modern Family, written by a moron, really boring. Writer has the mind of a very dumb and backward child. Sorry, Danny. Bruja. Oh, by the way, that's Danny Zucker, the writer and executive producer of Modern Family. Guess more caviar, private jets, and cigars lit with $100 bills would make it more relatable? Oh, by the way, Modern Family has won 12 Emmys. You're fired. Next, a new documentary about Marilyn Monroe called Love, Marilyn. This was Marilyn's book. 
as a small child, my first desire was to be an actress. The doc shows a whole new side of the icon with a newly discovered trove of the actress's letters and journals read by Glenn Close, Uma Thurman, Evan Rachel Wood, and Lindsay Lohan. It premieres Monday, June 17th on HBO. No NBA final game tonight, but who needs it when you can watch the Harlem Globetrotters and Dennis Rodman hanging with Kim Jong-un on a show called Vice. The crew travels to North Korea with a few globetrotters and talks to the supreme leader, who's known for his blatant anti-American rhetoric. Along the way, we get to watch Kim yucking it up with his bestie, Dennis Rodman. Pop culture burning like an international bromance on the hot list. Hey dads, thanks for all you do. And to my own daddy, you're right. The older I get, the smarter you get. So from my producers to fellow hosts, here's the list's tribute to our own dads. Thank you, Dad, for... Thank you for giving me confidence to take over the world. Always being my biggest fan. Thanks, Dad, for always being there for me and always supporting me. Thanks, Dad, for every time I'm pregnant, you always come to the hospital with me. And then you make me nervous the whole time. Teaching me, most importantly, that character counts. So what's the best memory you have of your dad? My dad, he's just always been part of my life. I don't really know how to narrow it down. When I was like 12 years old, dad wakes me up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go hike up this insanely tall mountain. We finally get to the top. As soon as we get to the top, the sun comes up and it reveals this forest and mountains as far as the eye can see. And the lesson was, Finish what you start. When I was a little girl, we went to Disney World and I told him this was the best day ever. And I told him as he was walking down the aisle that that was the best day ever. When my second son was born, he held him in his arms and he said, Teresa, this baby is not as cute as your first one. And the second one looks just like? My dad. Dad, the one secret I've kept from you from all of these years is... I don't cook nearly as much as I tell you I do. I may have had a few swigs of that wine collection that you kept in the living room. Remember that three wood that broke in your bag? I broke it. You know, the two times you caught me sneaking out, those were not the only times. <laughs> I don't think I have any secrets from my dad. Not that he needs to know right now. <laughs> I ditched school. I called myself in sick. Sorry. I owe you quite a bit, so thanks. None of our dads are currently in the military, but for those dads and kids who are serving, Father's Day can be even more meaningful. Let's take a moment to say thank you to military dads everywhere. I'd be lying to you if I told you I didn't wake up every morning and say a prayer to make sure he, he stays safe. Sergeant Ed Balaban's son is an active duty Air Force captain serving in Afghanistan. On his second deployment this year, father and son won't be together Sunday, but that's normal for this family. Ed's dad was a World War II Marine who received two Purple Hearts. Ed was a Naval officer who now works for the National Guard. I know there was my fair share of Father's Days I missed when I was over the deep blue and, and he was back home trying to figure out where's daddy. Sergeant, military men are supposed to be tough. We know that. But do you ever cry? Oh yeah, I get choked up a lot. You would too if your child was serving his country in one of the world's most dangerous places. On a personal note, my grandfather was in the Navy at D-Day. So this story has a little extra meaning for me. Happy Father's Day, Bup. Thankfully, this Father's Day, Operation Homefront is reuniting 300 military dads with their families. CEO Jim Knotts told me why that is so important. For these military dads, what matters most to them is being there and spending time with their families. But not everyone gets to be with their families this holiday. Whether you are or not, remember the words of Sergeant Balaban. Tell your kids you love them. Don't ever forget that. A hero hoarder? Memorabilia that's out of this world. And no cable? No problem. How some people are not paying to watch HBO. Next on The List. Guiltless and gutless. Here's a look at Great List's most beneficial beers for summer. Number four, Left Hand Good Juju. Number three, Abita Purple Haze. Number two, New Planet 3R Raspberry Ale. And number one, Yingling Light Lager. Get pumped and fill her up on us. The list is giving away a $50 gas card each Friday. Like us on Facebook and enter for your chance to win. Free Gas Friday. Register now at Facebook.com slash TheListShowTV.
I'm Matt Gallant, you're on the list. You don't have to be Betsy Ross to know that today is Flag Day. The U.S. flag was adopted on June 14th, 1777. So let's look at the stars and stripes by the numbers. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. The American flag has 50 stars representing the states and 13 stripes representing the original 13 British colonies. Over the years, the flag has changed 27 times, most recently in 1960 to accommodate Hawaii. This is really the greatest country in the whole world. All the other countries suck. Why are the three colors red, white, and blue? To the original members of the Continental Congress, red stood for hardiness and courage, white for purity and innocence, and blue for vigilance and justice. The biggest flag measures 505 feet by 225 feet and weighs more than 3,000 pounds. It takes 500 people to unfurl it. There are six American flags planted on the moon thanks to the crews from the Apollo missions. Unless, of course, Martians stole them. I'm just saying. $2.5 million worth of American flags are made in China every year. You know, Betsy Ross is rolling over her grave after hearing that. That's June 14th, Flag Day by the numbers. Thanks, Matt. It's not TV, it's HBO. And it could be your sister's, ex-boyfriend's, gardener's account you're using to watch it. Connor Knighton looks at the widespread use of HBO Go. So, Connor, what's the deal? In April, the season three premiere of Game of Thrones became the most pirated TV episode ever, according to Torrent Freak. It makes sense. The show has rabid fans and plenty of people are too cheap to pay for HBO. But those record numbers don't take into account all the people who watch the show on computers, tablets, and phones via HBO Go. People who also don't pay for HBO. Here's what's going on. If you pay for HBO, you get access to HBO Go. You log in with a username and password, and you can watch movies and all of HBO's shows. But you could also give your password to someone else. You're not supposed to, but that's what tons of people are doing. College humor sketch, The Secret of HBO Go, is a pretty good summary of how few people are paying for the service. Yellow. Hey, Dad, uh, hi, how's it going? Um, look, uh, can I get the HBO Go password again? Hank, I need your HBO Go password again. Oh, Jiminy Christmas. I need the HBO Go password you gave me again. You need it like right now? Yeah, now! Can I get that password? The HBO Go password sharing has made the New York Times, Buzzfeed, Business Insider, who writes, this is the new hot way to steal HBO, and HBO doesn't really care. Now, one solution would be to offer HBO Go as a standalone subscription, one that doesn't require cable. Because even if HBO costs around 15 or 20 bucks, you've gotta have cable first meaning it really costs $60 to $80 a month to watch Game of Thrones. People would pay for a standalone option. Last year, the Take My Money HBO campaign had folks begging for HBO to charge them just for the HBO Go service, 12 bucks a month on average. HBO said no, but the pressure is growing for them to offer a standalone version. For now, they're limiting the app to people who pay for the TV version, which is where they make most of their money even if they know people are sharing the online logins. Do you use HBO Go? Are you a paying customer? Can I have your password? Let me know at thelistshow.tv. And in the early days of HBO, it seemed like they aired Superman every other week. And for good reason, Superman is an icon. The new Man of Steel opened at midnight and crowds are packing theaters even as I speak. But sometimes Superman is only as popular as the guy who plays him. George Reeves back in the 50s, Christopher Reeve in the 70s and 80s, that other guy in 2006, and now Henry Cavill. But there's one super fan collector in Cleveland, Superman's hometown, who doesn't care who wears the tights. Mike Brookbank has the story. Well, he's the ultimate good guy. He's like a worldwide symbol of hope. That good guy is back on the silver screen in Man of Steel. Superman, created by a teenager in this house in Cleveland, Ohio. Superman, he was always a favorite. Is now 75 years old and is as popular as ever. I've always had a dream of doing a Superman museum and keeping it here in Cleveland. Jamie Regal owns more than enough memorabilia to fill a museum fit for a superhero. 
probably lowball and say 40,000 pieces. Regal's suburban Cleveland home, from the basement to the attic, is packed with containers full of Superman history. My oldest pieces are 1939. What's so unique about Jamie's collection is it spans every decade since Superman was created, and it covers anything and everything. I think I'm really the only guy I know of that collects everything. Some might consider Regal a little bit of a super hoarder. I think hoarding is more garbage. I mean, this is high quality collectibles. <laughs> An impressive collection that started with comic books. By the time I was like five years old, I had probably 10,000 comics. By the age of 12, Regal learned his favorite, Superman, was created in his hometown. So I put more focus into that. Not just the best one, but he was from Cleveland. And from there, one of the largest Superman memorabilia collections in the world was born. For The List, I'm Mike Brookbank. My personal kryptonite? The temptation to stay up and watch late night comedy shows. Here's the best from last night. Some experts believe that this privacy scandal will hurt the NSA. Do you think it'll hurt it? Hurt? What are you, crazy? You know how people, how many people want to join now? Especially when I heard the guy that blew the whistle is a high school dropout making almost $200,000 a year with a pole dancer girlfriend and he's living in Hawaii. People are lined up to get this job. Excited about Father's Day? Nine years ago when my son was born, uh, I was so excited and the uh, doctor handed me the little uh, brand new baby and he said, congratulations, you have a grandson. And I said, well, I don't know. This week, a 97-year-old man in New York graduated from high school. Isn't that nice? And I, yeah, good for him. I gotta say, he, he pulled a pretty good senior prank. He closed his eyes for a few seconds. <laughs> Evil shall not prevail. Here's Newsarama's list of the most dangerous Superman villains of all time. Number four, Doomsday. Number three, Bizarro. Number two, Brainiac. And the number one villain, Lex Luthor. Sitting on top of the world, the perfect view minus the climb. And don't look down, hanging out, 315 feet in the air. Breathtaking viral videos next on the list. You're on the list, I'm Jan Jeffcoat. Viral videos now with tetracycline. Fresh from a strange little pharmacy in Tijuana. Here are the day's best. Viralist. First up, cool down while going up. Check out this beautiful time lapse of camps along Mount Everest in Nepal. The adventurer and filmmaker captured these skylines while making a trip up the summit. Next, do not look down. A photographer in Daredevil is taken on a crane 315 feet up, and he warns, do not attempt this yourself. Taking a look down, my hands are getting clammy. Then he hangs down and he even holds on with just one hand in complete control. Lastly, lighten it up with a Mac. We'd like to give you a sneak peek of something we're working on. Is this like a new that? announcement for the new Apple product? It is a Mac unlike any we've ever made. Clearly, this is a huge upgrade. You can add storage arrays, you can add expansion chassis. And the fanatics, they're loving it. You can be this guy. Taking a megabyte on the viral list. Speaking of fanatics, they're going to have a busy weekend. We've got the Heat and Spurs game five. Mm -hmm. Go Spurs. All right, we've got the Bruins <laughs> and the Blackhawks. Go Blackhawks. Game two, go Bruins. I need an opinion. What else? And of course, we've got the U.S. Open. Go Mickelson. Yes. All right. Thank you. And thanks for watching the list. Here's what we're already working on for Monday. Go Bruins. Be cool by keeping cool. Future gear to help you chill out this summer. And you can teach an old dog new tricks. Train your pet into a superstar. Monday on The List.